let's get ready to get started. If you will, if you will. I know, but he just said just do too. So I'm going to obey him. That's what he said. Just do too. All right. Now, I've got a little video I want to play before we get started. This is something I meant to show last night, and uh, I think right here would be a good place for it. Keeps my works 
until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. Well, you're going to see more of that on Friday night as well. All right. So, I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to hear what he had to say about if you come across some got a question about something, something you've heard, something you've read, read, something you've seen, something that's popular that's out there, and you're not quite sure about it, one of my responsibilities is to help you eat the hay and leave the sticks, if you will, to, to navigate through what may or may not be the truth. And uh, so that's, that's another job description that I have. And, and I enjoy to get to do that. I'm anointed to do that. So get your cat on the tree, not so much. That, I'm anointed to do. And I'm not just showing you that uh, because I was running out of things to talk about. I have a message prepared. I really do. It's a good one. But today, he told me, if you will take questions and answers tonight, I'll make them extra exciting to come. Those are the real. And I said, all right. Yes, sir, whatever you say. So, I'm going to open this up. Please be gentle. And uh, I'm going to take questions that you have. I think, I think Rogene has already asked the first one. And uh, if you read that note that I wrote about Dear America, and I can, I can read the news, see the news, hear the news, read a newspaper, but I can also choose to confess what the Word of God says and to not undercut my nation with the words of my mouth. And Rogina was asking me, oh, that word undercut, undercut. Is that, do you want to offer yes. that up as a question? Yes. Because it's interesting that you would ask that, the Holy Spirit would tell me to do this. Because not very often can I point to a time in ministry, particularly preaching in someone's church, helps me take it off mute. When I can say, Let me turn this one off. Yeah, it's off. Okay. Uh, can I point to a time where I said, um, the Lord gave me a word. Turn, uh, number four, let's turn it down. Yeah. Okay. That I can point to a time where the Holy Spirit gave me a a regional word, if you will. You know, uh, there there are times in my private life, in my private times, when I find myself, I guess you probably prepping or preparing for something like that. You know, uh, in the Old Testament, you had uh, you had prophets that were prophets to Israel. You had prophets that were prophets to Judah, but then you had, you know, an Ezekiel, a Jeremiah, particularly a Jeremiah, and he's a prophet to the whole world. So different ministries have different assignments. Some are assigned to the local body and the local body alone. Some are assigned to a city. Some are assigned to a state. Some are assigned to a region. Some are assigned to a nation. Some are assigned to nations. The whole world. You know, he raises different ones up on, and gives different ones platforms. Some take it for themselves, but there are some authentic ones, a.k.a. who we were just watching, worldwide audience. And even bigger now, after he's going to be with the Lord since 2003. They have Bible schools in 80 countries. The sun never sets on a Raymer graduate. <laughs> However, 
when I was in Worthington, Minnesota, at Pastor Javier's church last year, after the service, we, and we had had a Holy Ghost service. I think that night was uh, Jesus the Apostle. No, no, it was Jesus the Baptizer. So, one, one of those messages. And we're down at the end, among at, at the floor of the, of the sanctuary, where the, where the prayer thing is, the altar, and the pastor's behind me on the podium. And he says, Pastor, I believe the Holy Spirit's given you a word. Now, I don't know him very well at this time. I'm still now just getting to know him. But he, he, he had said that. And I said, well, actually, I do have a word. And I, and I believe I'm supposed to give it out. And I believe it's bigger than just this church. And I've not shared it a lot with people because it just hadn't been time. You know, I shared it that day. when he, you, you have to understand that if, you, if you're someone who understands the power of words and you're not just somebody who just flippantly talks, your words tend to carry more weight than everybody else's. And so you're careful to say what you say and there's things you sit on. Because you realize there's a proper time and a season and a way and an atmosphere and an environment to sow a word from the Lord and you just don't tell everything you hear. And it takes maturity and character to not tell everything the Lord is telling you to tell. How would you like to be dating your sweetie and you whisper sweet nothings and she goes around broadcasting on Facebook? Not, not, not very trustworthy, are you? Well, probably one of the last times she'll tell you anything. You'll be on lockdown for a while. Verbal lockdown. Well, uh, so there's a lot of things I sit on. But when you said that tonight, and then he said, hey, take a question, just start right there. And you're and you just point like a we used to we, we used to call <laughs> we, we have an expression in Tennessee like a frog on a June bug. You know, that word undercut. Well, and that's exactly the word that the Holy Ghost gave me in Worthington, Minnesota. The Holy Spirit said for me to tell America. And anybody else who'd listen. And of course, it's his responsibility to get me in a platform to be able to do that. But, you know, we can start where we are. And he said to tell America, citizen, Christian citizens of heaven living in America, and anyone else who will listen, stop all this undercutting. The undercutting in the home between the parents and the children, between the wives and the husbands, and the husbands and the wives, and the brothers and the sisters, and in the political arena, and in the churches, the pastors and the congregation, the congregation and the pastors, in the banking systems, in the athletic teams, in the supermarket, in the schools. Stop all this undercutting. And then he gave specific instructions on how to do it. He said, wherever you go, wherever I lead you, wherever I take you, wherever you find yourself, always make it a point to leave people lifted or elevated. Always. No matter, no matter what you got to do, no matter how hard you have to swallow, leave people lifted. And that's where that word comes. And that's a man -made. You know, and if that's something he's telling me to do, I'm sure he intends for this congregation to do that too. I and mean, there's a penalty on it. I mean, I just feel them all over me right now, shooting up my legs. Just leave, stop all that undercut. And you, and, and you can't control your neighbor, but you can control you. You can stop you from doing it. I, I know I can be better at it. And you know, the more words you speak, the more liable you are to do it. So you really have to be careful. Water takes on the nature of the pipes that it flows through. If your pipes are rusty, well, the words are.
is going to be rusty. The water is going to be rusty. If your pipes are poisoned, your water is going to be poisoned. Clean your pipes. Here's how to do it. Here's how to do it. This is how to do it. Can we pray? Let's pray. Holy Spirit. Holy Father. We desire. We desire. We commit tonight to leave people lifted, to, to, to leave mankind elevated. To elevate mankind was the specific word you said. We come against undercutting wherever we find it. In our own lives, in the lives of others. We ask for insight and wisdom into what this means and how to walk this out, how to do this, and how to obey this. We praise you and we thank you that some of us have gone through such undercutting that it was that it was intended to destroy us, but what it's done is made us experts. And, and we just bind up that demonic attack in the name of Jesus. And we tell it to dissipate, disappear, and be gone in the mighty, masterful name of Jesus Christ, the master of the universe, the master of the universe who holds the keys of the kingdom. And he's handed them to us. And we unlock doors and bars and gates. We cut asunder with the words of our mouth, the word of God. And we fling open opportunities, doors and windows. And I just I see I see us right now pulling iron bars out of windows. Places that heretofore weren't safe are now safe. We just say that by faith in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood, Lord. I pray for Teresa. I pray for Carol. I pray for Regina. Myself and those listening. To be elevated, to be lifted, and to not be undercut anymore. We plead the blood of Jesus on that. There's a unique anointing in here tonight to eradicate undercut and to increase elevation expectation, imagination, visitation, remuneration, recuperation, reconciliation, and restoration, and, and, and no more indemnification, nor damnation, nor condemnation, but conviction and correction and protection and direction and wisdom from above and love above all else, love, 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 with faith in God above. In Jesus' name, give yourself a hug. Amen. <laughs> These are special anointings. Nightly, special anointings. What's the next question? If not, I've got a message to preach. Anybody got a question? That is I'm waving, waving hi to our internet audience. <laughs> Biblical based questions.
Anybody have a question? I was just saying that repentance was a gift. And I thought that was just like, you know, once you repent of your sins, you shall be saved. That you just come straight out and ask for repentance. But you said it's a gift. The Spirit got to draw you to repentance. You've got some skills now. Let me show you how to do this. Go right here to these. These, this right here with your arrow and uh, just click on that you, now, now put pause on that lift up your hands and come up here and put X be lifted up you know what I said Lord I said Lord I said Lord I said Lord I who is this key just, just click on it yeah there you go now come right here Click on this. Uh, click right there. Click on it. Left click. Come right up here and hit and, and, and just click in that box right there. Where it says Facebook. No, no, right there. Up above. Right there. Right there. And hit delete, top right button, right corner, top right corner, delete. On your keyboard. Carol, you want to go back there and help? Alright, now type in BIB, BIB. Enter, right there. Enter. Come right here and write, type the words grant and hit enter. And then scroll down. Right here. And scroll down. Just hit your, your bottom arrow on your bottom right. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Down, 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 down. New Testament is where we want to go. All right, where it says go, go up. Where it says uh, more results. Yeah, right there. Hit that. All right, right there. More results from the King James Version. Right there. Click on that. Uh, you have to use the keyboard's mouse to do it. Right there. No, it should be down there. It should be right here. Right there. There you go. Yeah, click. That's it. Click it. Left click. And then go down again. Down, 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 down. Keep going. New Testament. All right. Go to two. Right there. Or just next. Uh, left click. Very rarely do you ever hit right click. And then go down. Keep going, keep going. Whoa, slow. Go down. All right, I think, let me find, I think I've missed it. Let, let me talk back there. It's not you guys, it's the word. Some of these translations say it differently. And if I forget which one I'm reading, then, uh, then right here.
you the word peradventure. Well, now, here's the first one, Acts 11, 18. I think we're going to come back to that. All right. Uh, we've got two witnesses there. 2 Timothy 2.25. It says... Uh, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You see, a person's heart can get so cold, so hard to the Word, to obedience, to God, that, that they can't repent. That it's going to take God handing them granting to them. Repentance is grace. Okay? God God gives you saving faith. You don't even have it. He has to give it to you. And it's only activated when you hear the word about Jesus Christ dying for you. That that faith is activated. Remember, it's, it's on the scene but it comes up. It comes to life when it hears the word about it. Now, we, we can go to Judas and we can go to Esau. Type, uh, type in, go, go up north here, go to Acts 11, 18. See, the, 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 God, the, the repentance that God grants them is so that they can even acknowledge the truth. You see, that's, that's probably your, your most native version of, of repentance is simply acknowledging the truth. And some people are, are blinded by the enemy, 2 Corinthians. And some people are ensnared. And, and so, you know, uh, and, and look right here. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. Then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. You see that? It doesn't originate in man. It originates in the heart of God. And, and I, Jesus said in Isaiah 61 and 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He hath anointed me to preach good news to the who? To the poor, to the meek, to the humble, not to the prideful. The Bible says He opposes the prideful. He ain't giving them nothing but, but you know, opposition. Now, come up here to the top, and where it says keyword or phrase, very, 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 very top, type in, sought it with tears. Instead of repentance, just delete that and type in sought it, S O U G H T, with tears. Yeah, just, just backspace that. Uh, actually, come right here. Yeah, scroll down. Yeah, okay. For you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. If you want to read it in context, it's talking about Esau who had sold his birthright for a bowl of beans or a bowl of stew. He's saying, you, you can get to a point in God where he stops dealing with you about your sin. You see, we've got this teaching on grace out there, but God's grace has a, has a timetable, has a clock, and it's ticking. You know? And after a while, he's just going to say, okay, you want it, you got it. And you, you, you know where this happens the most I've seen? Is with, with relationships and jobs. God's got something on your life but you don't want to go that way. You don't want to go that direction. you got to have your way. And he's dealing with you and dealing with you and dealing with you. And he sends people to you. And he sends ideas. He sets you up. Divine appointment. And you just don't want to hear it. Until finally he's like, okay. Suffer them. Suffer them the consequences. Go ahead. You want it? You got it. You want her? You want Jezebel? You want Delilah? Go ahead. I'll be right here when you get through. Picking you up. Off your face in the pig pit. And I'm not going to berate you over it. I'm not going to beat you up and say, I told you. So. Well, I might have a little bit. I might keep you over it. 
But, <laughs> but does that make that make sense? See, and and then and then Judas had the same thing happen. Remember, Judas repented. You, you can type him in there too. And you'll find that he took that money and he threw it back at the people. And uh, uh, just Judas, just type in Judas. This kind of goes along with the message that I had planned to preach, actually. We, we may yet get into it. Right there, just type in Judas. Uh, backspace and type in Judas. Yeah, scroll down. And uh, we'll be at the end of one of the Gospels when we find it. So, not that one. Wait. Wait. Yeah, right here. Matthew 27 and 3. You got it right there. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Read it in the whole context. Hit, hit 2 through 4 right there. Because it should go on to say, but it did him no good. Uh, left click it. Okay, now scroll down. Uh, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. Uh, hit that one right there. That'll show you the whole chapter. That one right in the middle. Right there. Yeah, hit that one right there. Let's see what else it says. Going down to verse 5. Okay. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Does that sound like God granted him repentance? Or does it sound like he had a man-made version? He had a human version of repentance. Did you realize that some people can pray with you to repent and not be sincere? And, and only God knows the heart. And you know how you know whether they're sincere or not? You can judge a tree by its fruits. And if you see it hanging from a tree, the fruit is no good. <laughs> if there's a dead body on that tree, after they repent, the tree was not bearing good fruit, was it? Isn't that a prophetic symbolism of the whole deal? Judas hanging on a tree, you'll know the tree by its fruit. Wasn't Judas representative of the whole nation of Israel, the fig tree? Bunch of betrayers? All of mankind? Betrayers of Jesus? We put him up there. He volunteered to go, but we put him up there. But we weren't even born. Does that help with all that? There's got to be, it, it, there's got to be a grace on the repentance. Otherwise, it don't work. And it starts with God granting, giving that grace is given. It's not earned or deserved. It's by grace. And see, He gives it to those who qualify. Do you see that? Let, let me get into tonight's message a little bit. Uh, yes. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly right. It, yeah, he's got to draw you unto repentance. Yes, he does. I mean, we, we think we have so much to do with certain stuff and we really don't. Uh, go, go with me. You, go to my... Take this and minimize it down right here. This you just we just skipped over the church tonight. We're gonna to be right into the into that to the supplement. 
click that right there, left click, and then click on this right here where it says Sardis Shortcut. Just click that right there. Double click it. Left, left double click. That's it. Now, maximize that right there. Right there. And then hit this right here with your left click. This one right there. That one right, no, not the middle, that one. Right there, yeah. Click that. Now, this is what the message was going to eventually get to tonight, but you got us there a different way altogether with your question. The church, the next church that we talk about tonight, church number five, is Sardis. Short for sardines. No, I'm kidding. In Sardis, there is a doctrine, there is a sacred cow that we will knock over. Can you lose your salvation? Is it really once saved, always saved? Let me take a poll. Who in here believes that once you're saved, you're always saved and you can't lose it? Raise your hand if you believe that. Are you raising your hand? Who in here believes that it's possible that you can lose your salvation? Having authentically been saved, but then lose it. Raise your hand if you believe that. Anybody? Well, why don't we do this? Do you guys want to know the answer? So we just move on. You want to move on to Philadelphia? You want to skip Sardis? You sure? You want to cover this tonight? No. All right. Well, then hit left click. Left click. Let's go to Philippians 4 and 3. And as you turn there, I'm going to read you something out of Revelation chapter 2. This was a uh, an admonition, a warning to the church at Sardis that is worthy of discussing. Chapter Revelation chapter three verse one or verse uh, verse five. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. What is the book of life? First of all, before we get into any deep detail, what, what is the book of life? Well, we find it mentioned in Philippians 4 and 3. And it says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, hope those, help those, Help me, Lord. Which labored with me in the gospel. This is not Fred saying, but help Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. With Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Fellow laborers, labor in the book of life. So there evidently is a book in heaven. And God writes people's names in it. And it has something to do with service. It has something to do with serving God. Something. And, and He writes their name in it. And it's not called the Book of the Dead, like the Mummy movies, but it's called the Book of Life. Well, Revelation 3 and 5, we just read that. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Now, he would not have said this if it couldn't happen. It would have been no threat. It would have been no warning. It would have been no correction. It would have been no terror, respect, fear of the Lord. You would have been wasting his words. You'd be like, yeah, you threaten to spank me all the time. You see? But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Now this is interesting because Jesus said, If you're ashamed of me before men, 
I'll be ashamed of you before my father. But if you confess me before a man, I'll confess you before my father. So, he's telling them, you're going to have to overcome to get clothed in white and to not have your name blotted out. Which makes us, which leads me to believe that there might be some who don't overcome whose names do get blotted out. And who do not get their names confessed before the Father and before His angels. And if that happens, where do you go? South. And I ain't talking about Key West either. Though it, it's probably ten times hotter than Key West. A thousand times hotter. And if your name is written in it, in order to blot it out, they got to get an eraser, don't they? You don't blot out what was never in there, do you? So you can't say, well, they just were never saved. You see? But let's let Scripture interpret itself. Click left, click again. We also find the Lamb's Book of Life mentioned in Revelation 13, 8 and Revelation 17 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, but not every name that does it is written in the Lamb's book of life. They got their little day. They were Tebow and after the fact, after the game. Got to do it in the end zone, brother. <laughs> Revelation 17 and 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. So he ascends out of the bottomless pit. That is in hell. And he's hanging out with people in hell, and their outstanding characteristic, their communion is centered around this significant event of not having their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So they either never were saved or they got blotted out. Uh, let's hit left click again. Revelation 20 and 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. So he's got books. We got books, but he's got books. And another book was open, which is the Book of Life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The first work is the work of grace. Did you get saved? Did God's Spirit do a work of grace in you? Are you a 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 new creation? Or is he going to say, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. Lord, we did this in your name. Lord, we did that in your name. I never knew you. Bye-bye. You are the weakest link. <laughs> Revelation 20 and 15. And whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's not a stroll down the Crystal River in the middle of the summer on an inner tube, my friend. That is a burning place of fiery torment and judgment and condemnation. Left click, please. Revelation 21 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you have to be written in. And you can be blotted out, evidently. Otherwise, we wouldn't be using the word blot. Revelation 22 and 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So right now we're learning one way you can get blotted out is to mess with the scriptures, a.k.a. Joseph Smith, a.k.a. Jehovah's Witnesses, a.k.a. Tribalism, etc., 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 Rastafarianism, yeah. Water baptism saves you. No, it doesn't. There's entire Christian denominations that preach that and church membership. The COC. 
They just ordained the first Lutheran openly gay clergy member. Uh, messing with the scriptures, the effeminate nor the homosexual will not inherit the kingdom of God, much less heaven. Left click, please. Psalm 69, 27-29. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. Now this is David. We're going back to the Old Testament. So it's not a new concept. And not be written with the righteous. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So if you are not in Christ Jesus, you are not a new creation, you are not the righteousness of God, you are the unrighteousness. And so you do not make it in the book of the living. But I am poor and sorrowful, let thy salvation of God set me up on high. Left click. Psalm 109, 12 through 14. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. Let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Keep going. Colossians 2 and 14. There is another kind of blotting out that you should be excited about, that you should be in favor for, that you should know all there is to know about. Colossians 2 and 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Did you know there was a list of ordinances against us? Not just one. A list which was contrary to us, us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Men, we have these men's meetings and we go and we nail things to the cross, things we've been struggling with, etc., etc. We, we, that's a common thing. Isaiah 44, 22. I have blotted out, can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? As a thick cloud, thy transgressions, and as a cloud, thy sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed thee. Acts 3.19 Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. If your sins aren't blotted out, your name will be. He's just going to flip the pen. He's going to flip the pencil. He's not writing you in, he's writing you out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. But we were watching tonight about the brother repented. They had revival for 90 days. Said if we had more people repent, it probably would have lasted seven years. Everybody wants revival. Well, it starts with this one word right here, another R-E word. Repent. <laughs> Left click, please. Exodus 32, 32. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. This is Moses interceding for Israel. Saying, if you don't forgive their sin, then blot my name out. In other words, you don't get, if you don't take them, you don't get me. That's, that's a pretty powerful intercessory prayer right there. Because the Lord's like, look, let me just start over with you. I, we can handle these folks. They mumble, grumble, complain. I'm tired of listening to them. I will start over with you and repopulate this planet. Moses is like, no, -uh, I saw what Abraham would do. No, no, you keep these people. <laughs> All right. Exodus 32, 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, him I will blot out of my book. Well, Deuteronomy 9 and 14, Let me alone, this is what we were just saying, that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So the Lord is saying, look, I'll wipe all of them out. I'll wipe the whole nation out. I'll create a new nation better and stronger than them. I'll do it. I'll do it starting with you. Just let me add it, man. Let me add it. What did you just say? What? Oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. What, what was that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must have missed that. What, what was that you said? Oh, which way are we going to go? Which way are we going to go? Oh, oh. What's that over there? No, he's not up in heaven like that. When you find out 
who this person is, you'll go. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't want to tell you to click it. I got the $40 clicker up here. Who, who is blotted out? That's what I want to know. If, if people are getting blotted out for sinning against the Lord, who, who are these people? I don't, because I sinned today. I don't want to be one of them. Did you, did you write it? You better write me back in. Well, go to Hebrews chapter 6. Now, isn't it interesting that we find the people who are blotted out, and there are, right on the heels of what we've been teaching for two months now. Remember Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1? Therefore, when you see the word therefore, you need to stop and see what it's there for. Let us leave the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ. Remember that? And then he goes to verse 3, and he says, This we will do if God permits. Now notice verse 4. Go to Hebrews 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible. This is verse 4 of, 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 of what we were just been reading, Hebrews 5 and 12 through 6 and 3. For by now you ought to be teachers. You remember this? And then he names the six doctrines. And then in verse 4 he says, for it is impossible. It is impossible. Say this with me. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. For those who were once enlightened. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Well, what does that mean? That means they, they, their eyes saw the truth of the gospel. They saw, I, I'm a sinner. Jesus is a savior. We need to hook up. And then not only did, were they enlightened, but they tasted of the heavenly gift. That means Jesus was living in their heart. They tasted of it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is that gift that cometh down from the Father above, with whom there is no shadow of turning nor variableness. He is good and perfect. But not only that, we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. So they tasted salvation and they partook of the Holy Ghost. They had some leading. They, they had some familiarity with the Holy Spirit in His direction. His teaching and His training. They had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. We're, we're, we're at the top of the funnel. Thank God it's going to get very narrow in a minute. But right now, whoo, better check yourself. <laughs> and have tasted the good Word of God. Not just the Word, but the good Word. Not just the milk, which we were just talking about, but the meat. So this person that loses their salvation is spiritually enlightened at one time, at one time, tasted of the heavenly gift, they partook of Jesus, and they had a rel some relationship with the Holy Ghost, and they were eating, they were eating on the meat of the word. And the powers of the world to come. What are, what are the powers of the world to come? Turn to 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Y'all like this? This is good stuff, isn't it? It's very enjoyable. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 7, or verse 7 through 10. <clears throat> but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. The powers of the world to come is, is somebody who is flowing. They are spirit-filled. 
and they are flowing in the gifts. I'm going to tell you this. These are full-time ministers. Can you go? Thank you, Lord. These are people serving in full-time ministry. Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, signs and wonders, miraculous healings, miracles, faith, etc., etc., etc. Full-time, full-scale. These are who are in the category of potentially losing their salvation if they fall away to renew them again into repentance. Seeing crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put into an open shame. If you don't want Him, you ain't got to have Him. And, and let me tell you, Remember when Jesus said, look, you can talk against me, you can talk against the Father, but, but when you start calling, when you start talking about the Holy Ghost, you're in danger of damnation and hell fire. Because the, there is a sin that you cannot get forgiven of. It is called the unpardonable sin. Anybody heard those words before, the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin is very simple. People wonder what it is. I think I've committed unpardonable sin. No. The, 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 the one sin that God cannot forgive is rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You can't get forgiveness for that. And that was the work of the Holy Ghost. Go to Ephesians 3 and 20. Well, Ephesians 3, 19 and 20, and I'll show you that. Or, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power? Remember, power is to come. Which He... And his exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And how did he do it? By the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and Romans tells us specifically that very thing. That he, he, he was made alive by the Holy Ghost. The, Holy, the second Adam was made a quickening spirit. The Holy Spirit quickened Jesus in the belly of hell. You cannot blaspheme against that and expect to get forgiveness. So, when you put all that together, the people that do not get renewed again into repentance and die in their sin a second time are those full-time ministers who are flowing in the Holy Ghost, who are spirit-filled, tongue-talking, mature believers who get to this place and they say, forgive this. I'm doing this. I'm done with this. Jesus, I don't want you. I'm done with you. Turn to Psalm 119, uh, 165. And when you get there, turn to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, Psalm 119, 165. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. It's in the exact middle of the Bible. And it uses ten different expressions for the word, word, word of God. 
So it's all about the, the value, the eminence, the preeminence, the awesomeness of the Word of God. So if you ever find yourself questioning Bible reading, questioning God's Word, authenticity, etc., etc., read Psalm 119. It will do wonders for your hunger for the Word of God. I'll, I'll give you an example, but not right now. Uh, Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have those who love your law, or, or your word. That's the law is one of those ten words. And nothing causes them to stumble. The King James says, nothing shall offend them. You get going in the motions, you get doing your ministry. The, 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 the quickest, the fastest, easiest place to backslide in all of Christianity is in Bible school. Because you're reading the Bible every day with your mind on future and training and people you're assigned to. And you think that that somehow, you let it slip somehow that it substitutes for your personal one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. In the ministry, you can backslide like that. Because you get caught up in, well, I'm reading this for, Regina's going to have questions. Teresa's going to have questions. Carol's got questions. And the whole time the Lord's going, dude, you are a question. <laughs> you do not need to talk. Uh, come away. We'll handle all them. When we handle you, we'll handle them. You see? But if you, if you don't stay fresh with that, if you don't keep that in the forefront of your mind, this is why when you find, when you're looking for your man or woman of God, you, one of the outstanding characteristics you need to look for in them, yeah, they need to know the word, but you need to see tenacity. You need to see bulldog faith. You need to see somebody who's got a locked jaw on a bone called the word of God and will not let go. That's what you, you need to, I don't care how pretty they are, how, how technologically advanced they are, how many pulse hole diggers they have next to their name. If they are not tenacious about the Word of God, eventually it's going to fall. Them or it or both. And maybe you included. But if you can find somebody, and I know some people <laughs> that are like that. In the mirror, I, every day I look at one who have bulldog tenacity about the Word, not about ministry, not about the work of the ministry. The Word. Then you, you, got, you need to treasure that, protect that, honor that, hang out in that, and let that come on you. Let that same anointing drift over on you. You need to just submit to that. Whose faith follows those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. But you have to know them to be able to inherit them. And if you don't know the word, it's because you got no tenacity for it. Because God will show you. He'll teach you if you got hungry. You know, he'll, he'll just float open the windows. There you go. Oh, you you, you want to know me? Oh, watch this. <laughs> you know? You can't even speak in tongues. It's so holy. It's just tongues don't even do. But these guys, it was a business. Go to John 10. I told you to look at Revelation 2 and 1. On your way to Revelation 2 and 1, turn to John 10, chapter 1. Hold your finger there. And go over to Revelation 2 and 1. And it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Doesn't that sound like these guys? A little bit? But notice this. Nevertheless, doing all of that, I have this against you. You have left your first love. The Word. You've left the Word. You're doing the stuff. And you've forgotten the Word. The author of the book. And then he goes on to say, Repent and do the first works, 
or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. What does the Bible call the lampstand? Well, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20, it says the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So he says if you lose your first love, you're doing all the stuff. I mean, read what these guys are doing. Works, faith, patience, perseverance, trying false ministers. But you lose your love for the Word of God, he'll snatch your church up. What do you think will happen to your salvation? Mr. Minister. Mr. Jesus Jr. You gotta stay in love with the word of God. There's, there's just got you know what I did today? I crawled in here, I laid on that thing right there, and I just hit Brother Hagan and my Bible, and I just and I and when you guys got in here, I, I'm five hours in. I just, that's where I need to be. I, I walk up to the wall socket and plug in. <laughs> plug in. For me, I don't think about y'all. I mean, you know, not directly. I'm talking about me. If I'm jacked up, they, you know, there's the answer to all of it right there. But if I'm all right, then at least we, there's hope. <laughs> you know. So that's who these guys are. Go to John 10. Let me show you this guy. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. I always trying to get into ministry. On their own terms, They're always trying to put themselves in an office that God didn't even either didn't call them to, or didn't call them to it yet. Always trying to work it. Always, always trying to promote themselves. I'm Pastor So and So. Really, where's your congregation? Well, they're online. Oh, and how do they tithe? Well, PayPal. I thought it said bring ye all the time to the storehouse, not into the internet website. Always trying to schmooze you. Got the business card, got the little 501c3 paperwork going for them. We'll give you a tax write up, we'll give you a donation. Give me, give me, give me. Uh, I would rather vomit a fur ball than hang out with that stuff. And I've been around it. 20 years. Waiting in the wings. Oh God, I thank you for sparing me. Now, he says, uh, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. This is a spiritual thing. This is not how many people can I, how many doors can I knock on? How many people can I get in here? I don't want to just get people in here. I want to get the sheep assigned to my life, to our lives. That, that's who I want in here. If they're not the sheep God decided to me, I don't want them. They're going to be miserable. I know I'm going to be miserable. And probably a whole lot of other people. who would have been just springing up defiles me. And I don't want the wolves and I don't want the goats. And I don't want other people's sheep. I want my sheep. <laughs> That's who I want. <laughs> but you know how I, they'll know that they're my sheep and I'll know they're my sheep? My voice. You'll hear my voice. When I'm not even around, you'll hear me speaking scriptures in your ear. Oh, I wish, he, I wish he'd leave me at home. Oh, stop talking, Pastor Eric. It's Tuesday. Can I have a day off? You know you better pray than tongues for that co-worker right there. You be, that's Mr. Sniffles right there. See? I'm talking about Mr. Sniffles for a month, and you ain't laying hands on me yet. <laughs> Get on, Lord. Get on. But then it also says, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So I'm going to have to get to know you on some level. I don't know your social security number. You know, I don't care what color socks you wear or don't wear. You know, that's between you and Jesus. Hopefully you can dress yourself. But I should know something about what's going on in your life. And I ought to be leading you. I ought to be out in front leading you. 
when he brings out his, his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. I, I'm, I mean, I might be teaching right doctrine, but you just not be one of my sheep and you're doing good. It's not even about any of that. It's just we're not assigned to each other. You should go down to Pastor Anita's house and see what's going on down there. Or, you know, go to Countryside or wherever you want to go. You know, find it. And I've told people that. You know, I, I don't think this is working. One of us is going to have to move and it's not going to be me. And I mean in love, not in a mean way, not in, you know, some were more interesting than others, but, you know. <laughs> Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. See, if I can't lead you, you ain't mine. You're a stranger to me, and I'm a stranger to you. We need to just call this thing a spade. This is what this is what it is. We just, we ain't, no, no. Go down the street. Go do us all a favor, and, and I, I have no hard feelings. I'll talk you up really good. Love you, love you, love you. But, and don't run my name through the mud. And I've had that happen. Next time, next time I saw it, some of them, they had a broken arm in a sling. Like, that ain't that interesting. I break my arm, cut my legs out, and the next thing I know, you've got a sling on your arm. And I'm flourishing. Plant and church number two. And you're still trying to figure out the meaning of life. <laughs> You know, that's why, that's another reason why I tell you the church is not democratic. Okay, it's not. One of us has more authority than the other, and we just need to just call it, okay? Just say yes. And, and I like what Brother Hilton Sutton, Sutton said here. And he used to pastor before he was a worldwide teacher. He's going on to be with the Lord, too. He, he passed at 87. When we, the first time I taught the book of Revelation, to this church we were meeting in down the street and uh, the very first Sunday I taught it he had passed away the night before yeah didn't know that I found that out later but I like what he said he, you saw how he's a gray haired man you know he did and he said I have a pastor and I have a great pastor and I'm older than my pastor you see you, you, you start talking about stuff like that and you're talking spirit to spirit you're not talking about it in the flesh we don't know one another according to the flesh. I, I'm going to have a birthday eventually, and I'm going to say there might be some folks in here tonight that are older than me. Maybe everybody. I don't know. Don't want to know. It's none of my business. You know, I'm turning 16 unless you're 17. You know, you're older than me. Or, I'm, you know, I'm younger. But anyway. Uh, but he also said, you got to let your pastor lead you. You know, you got to open your, your heart up to your pastor. So, it's a spiritual dynamic here. But what, as we go on in this John 10, we read this. And you know what I love about this right here, this, this, this deep, intimate setting, is you, I, I'm training leaders. I mean, I don't even have to say that by faith. I'm training leaders in this church. I've known it. It, it took me till this time to realize it. But then I was like, wait a minute, why am I looking at empty seats? I'm looking at leaders. Yeah, I'm missing it. When I look at empty seats, I'm missing leaders. I'm not seeing it right. You see what I'm saying? See, we all grow and learn. Now, I have a right attitude about this. Can you tell? Yeah. I'm looking at leaders. Do you know what people would pay to go through this stuff? You know what I paid to go through this stuff? Yeah. I'm looking at leaders. Or you wouldn't even be in here. This is leadership. Yeah. And don't think I'm not watching ways to hand you more stuff to do. When the time is right. Because I know you'll be able to handle it. Because I know we're on the same page. You're not going to flake out on me. He says, Most assuredly I said to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Did you know there's ministers like that? Thieves and robbers? I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Yeah! Broad is the way that leads to death and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. But once you're in, man, it's a big old pasture. 
Once you get in the narrow way, holiness is the narrow way he's talking about, not salvation. Lots of people get saved. There's billions of Christians. We've taken that verse out of context. Some of you just went, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you ever notice that? They use that in salvation, the context of salvation? That's not right. Few there be that find salvation. There's billions of Christians. Tons of people find Christianity. And after we're gone, tons more do. God don't lose. He ain't losing to the devil. There's seven billion people. May, there ain't going to be four billion people going to hell out of that seven. He ain't going to have it. He, that means he lost and he don't lose. The devil's a loser. This is talking about holiness and sanctification is what that narrow way is. Remember when he said there'd be a, a highway of holiness? That's what he's talking about. But once you get sanct once you enter into the process of sanctification and holiness, woo-wee, man, there's a lot that you can do. You get holy and sanctified, and then the power turn up in your life, and you have doors open all over the place to do stuff for the Lord. This thing, you can go in and you can come out and you can have passion. Bet you haven't had that explained before like that. He says, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Brother, I'm all in. If you ain't figured that out by now, whether I'm all in or not, dude, I live here. I gave my car away. How long have I been waiting for that car? And I gave it away. To the church, member. I'm all, brother. I'm all in. I have yet to take a salary for this. I take what's left over and try and try to do what I do, and then I go preach. These are places, and I receive love offerings, so you guys aren't stressed to the max. Y'all got bills. I don't know if you know it or not. Y'all got bills. Y'all do. Y'all got a thousand dollar rent payment. You got a light bill, you got a water bill, you got a cable bill, you got a trash bill, a phone bill, an internet bill, you got food, you got printing, Lord God of the printing. You got electronics, you just bought a camera, you bought a pointer. Y'all got bills. And do y'all know how much comes in? Well, hallelujah. <laughs> Let me just say it this way. Thank God for casting your seed in seven different directions <laughs> instead of just depending on this. Because, brother, you talking about you want to lose weight and get skinny real quick. That would be a good way to do it. We're getting insurance. That mower needs Jesus. We're going to wind up paying somebody to cut the grass. We were, you know, we were given a mower in South Dakota. I guess I'll just ride it down here. <laughs> and a refrigerator. You, you understand what I'm saying? You see how this works? Yeah. Somebody's not paying for all this stuff. It could just magically appear. Yeah. So, at the packed church I came from, now he lives in a million dollar house. But he didn't take a salary, him or his wife, who both worked full-time in the church for 10 years. The first 10 years of church, they didn't take a salary. But they, now, they, you know, after 30 years, they, they, you know, praise the Lord, <laughs> it's good in that household. You know, financial. Bible's the truth be told, I'm worthy of double honor. That's the truth. That's what the Bible says. That's not real popular in some circles, but that's the truth of the Bible. But God takes care of me. This church is not my source. I found that out the first time I took up the tithes and offerings on uh, August the 28th in 2011, and there was $22 in the budget. The reality.